Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a problem called Adjacent Increasing Subarrays Detection 2. It sounds a bit complicated, but we're going to break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. Alright, so here's the official problem description. You can pause and read it if you like, but let me give you the simple version. We're given a list of numbers, and our goal is to find the biggest possible number, let's call it k, where we can find two subarrays, both of length k, that satisfy two key rules. First, both subarrays must be strictly increasing. This just means that as you go through a subarray, each number has to be bigger than the last. Second, these two subarrays have to be adjacent. They need to be touching, one ending, right where the next one begins. Our job is to find the maximum length k for which this is possible. Let's look at this example. We have a list of numbers. If we scan through it, we can spot a few increasing sequences. For instance, there's 2, 5, 7, 8, 9. That's a nice long one. Then the sequence breaks, and a new one starts. 2, 3, 4. The first subarray, 7, 8, 9, has a length of 3. And the second one right after the break, 2, 3, 4, also has a length of 3. They're not perfectly adjacent but they're formed by consecutive increasing runs. The problem allows for this. Since we found two such runs of length 3, our answer is 3. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python. But don't worry if that's not your main language. The logic is the same, and I'll show the full code for Java, C++, and JavaScript towards the end of the video. So how can we solve this efficiently? The key insight is that we don't need to check every possible subarray. All we really care about are the lengths of the continuous, strictly increasing runs of numbers. We can find these lengths by just walking through the array once. We'll use two simple variables to help us. One, we'll call count, will track the length of the increasing run we're currently in. The other, previous count, will remember the length of the run that just ended. As we walk through the list, there are really only two ways we can form our two adjacent subarrays. The first case happens when one increasing run ends and a new one starts. We have the length of the previous run and the length of the current one. The biggest k we can make is limited by the shorter of these two runs. The second case happens inside a single, very long, increasing run. We can simply split this long run down the middle to create two adjacent, increasing subarrays. The length k in this case would just be half of the total length of that long run. We'll check both possibilities at every step and keep the best k we find. Alright, here's the full Python code for this approach. It might look a bit dense at first, but don't worry, we're going to break it down line by line to see exactly how it works. First, the setup. We get the total number of elements, n. Then we initialize our three key variables. Count starts at 1, because any single number is an increasing subarray of length 1. Previous count starts at 0, since we haven't finished a run yet. And our answer, ants, also starts at 0. Then, we start a loop from the second element of the list, so we can compare each number with the one that came just before it. Inside the loop, our first check is simple. Is the current number, the one at index i, bigger than the number just before it? If it is, that's great. It means our increasing sequence is getting longer. So we just add 1 to our count variable to extend the run. Now for the else case. This code runs when the increasing sequence breaks. This is the most important part. First, we check if we can make a better k using the run that just ended, which is our current count and the one before that our previous count. We take the smaller of those two lengths and see if it's better than our current best answer. Next, the run we were just counting is now over, so it becomes the new previous count. Finally, the number that broke the sequence starts a brand new run, so we reset our count back to 1. After the loop finishes, there are a couple of things left to do. The loop only updates the answer when a sequence breaks. So the very last run in the array never got a chance to be compared, we have to do that check one last time. We compare the final previous count with the final count. And we also need to check that second case we talked about. Can this last run be split in half to give us a good answer? We check that, update our answer one last time, and then we're done. So, how efficient is this solution? For time complexity, it's big O of n, where n is the number of elements in the list. This is because we only make a single pass through the array from beginning to end. And for space complexity, it's big O of 1, or constant space. We only use a handful of variables to keep track of our counts. And the amount of memory we use doesn't change no matter how big the input array gets. It's a very efficient solution. Alright, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can see the logic is exactly the same as the Python version, just with Java's syntax. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. 
Next up here is the C++ version of the solution. Again we're just translating that same single pass logic into C++, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. It's all about that single pass and keeping track of the current and previous run lengths. So let's wrap it up. The key takeaway here is that we can solve this problem with a very efficient one-pass approach. The trick is to stop thinking about individual subarrays and instead focus only on the lengths of the continuous increasing runs. By keeping track of the current and previous run lengths and considering the two main cases for forming our pairs, we can find the answer quickly and with minimal memory. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.